Hello, my name is Vitos Doino from Vitos Academy and today I will show how to use unit tests in the calculation of Fibonacci number with Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2019. So pretty much we go to File, New, Project, ConsoleApplication.net Core, make sure it's C-sharp, it is C-sharp, it's also written here C-sharp. So we click on Next and we name our project name Fibonacci with um, X unit. Create a new solution, place solution and project in the same directory and click on create. Don't save whenever you have the old projects. And this is what we start with. We open the solution explorer, we change the name because it's a convention that I like to start with startup and not with program, but this is not exactly important. And delete the hello world that comes from the .NET Core solution. Oh, I somehow deleted the startup. So about Fibonacci, uh, this is a sequence that uh, has the following ruling. It Every number of this sequence is equal to the sum of the previous two numbers, so pretty much the first number is 1, the second number is 1, then we have a 2, then we have a 3, and the fifth number is 5. So these two are by default like this, starting, the two starting numbers are like this, so then 2 is equals, equals 1 plus 1, then 3 equals 3 2 plus 1, then 5 equals 3 plus 2, the next one should be 8, which equals 3 plus 5, and the next one should be 13, equaling 8 and 5. So that's pretty much enough for the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, the th what we should do now is creating the Fibonacci class. It goes like this. Fibonacci CS, and it's called class Fibonacci. We'll make it public. And we would start thinking how to what to do now. Of course, now in the Fibonacci class we need a function that calculates Fibonacci and returns. I would make it return along actually. So I'll call simply calculate. As far as it's in the Fibonacci class, calculating can be only one thing. And in our case it would be only one thing. Uh, okay, it's underscored in red. The reason is uh, that it's not returning anything, so we write throw new not implemented exception like this. And it looks like quite okay. Now what we should do is start with the tests because we need to write just enough code in the class that the tests fire, fail, fail. So we go to uh, tools and we search for NuGet packages. NuGet packages is of course not in, tool, in tools but it's in project managed NuGet packages and we click on browse and on browse we look for XUnit, we look for the one with the most downloads actually, although that's a bit different I guess. Anyway, this with the 42 million downloads is quite okay. Installing the, last, the latest stable version and it is here. So we go here and we say add new project, we write xunit, we select the language in order not to install a vb.net language or what was the rest or the yeah, f sharp, yeah we don't need f sharp as well for this case and we call it xunit test Fibonacci. So, in the XUnit test Fibonacci, mm, I 
I'll leave it like this. Unit test one. It's it's a good name as far as we re we won't write more than one. It's okay. Uh, or we can change it to Fibonacci test. Because later in our project we can have other tests. Uh, it looks like this. So the first one would be in the class unit test one. Also change it here. That's the idea. Like the name of the f of the file should be exactly like the class. Uh, now the void. So the first one would be simply checking how much Fibonacci would be for zero zero one. As far as this is a corner case. And we need to do three things in a test. The three A's, A, A, A. Arrange, act, assert. So arrange would be var Fibonacci equals new Fibonacci. So we print this and we don't see anything. So the point is that we don't have a dependency for this prod for the Fibonacci with U X unit, we don't have a relation, and not having a relation or a reference is bad, so we have to edit. Fibonacci with X unit is like this, adding it. Still, we have this red thing, but now pressing Ctrl and dot shows us that we can put some Fib uh, using. And if you see, this using is exactly like this using here. So, putting it, it shows, and now we don't have a problem. So, we need a result, var result is uh, pretty much Fibonacci dot the Fibonacci calculate. And we have to give one, as I mentioned at the beginning, and assert dot equal. Mm, result is equal to 1. Okay, what it doesn't like? It doesn't like uh, that the expected is not the first, but the exp and the actual is here. Like, the idea should be that actual is the left one and expected is the second one. So, as far as 1 is a pretty much a constant, we can leave it like this. And this is our first test. Yeah. We can write a few more, naming them Fibonacci 002. So the second Fibonacci and the second Fibonacci, as I said at the beginning, is also one. Another test, calling it Fibonacci 5. So the fifth Fibonacci actually is 5. And another test, which is going to be to the 12. So what is the 12 Fibonacci? If you Google it or if you calculate it for like a couple of minutes or seconds, if you have like a computer in front of you, it's 144. So this is, these are my tests. 001, 002, 005, and 0012. Yes. What it doesn't like is the following, as you say here, public method Fibonacci 005 on test class Fibonacci should be marked as a fact. If it is not marked as a fact, it would not be run as a test. Pretty much these are the rules. So what do we do now? The only thing we do is to go to tests, run all tests. Would all tests fail? Of course they should fail, because we have not implemented any logic. Let's so running the Fibonacci tests. We go on uh, tests, run all tests, and we wait a bit. This is what happens. Fibonacci zero zero one throws 
system not implement an exception on method of operation. System number two throws the same, everything throws the same, and we see that actually it in the test it shows us the result. So what we should go do now is going to Fibonacci and start actually implementing the things. As you see, we have zero for zero tests that didn't pass out of four tests. Visual Studio 2019 is helping us a lot here. So, how should we do the Fibonacci? Actually, we should try first with recursion. So, the recursion says return mm, and returning the, the position minus one plus the position minus two. Would it work like this? Yes, but there should be like also the end of the recursion and the end of the recursion would be whenever we have uh, the positions. So at the end mm, we should make the position. So if the position is zero then we would be returning zero this is our case or if the position is one we will be returning one yeah pretty much or it can we can make it like this if the position is one we return one in order to follow the logic that i explained at the beginning and if the position is two we also return one because the first two numbers of fibonacci are one and one yes and calculate position minus two yeah, let's see what would happen now. When we run all the tests, would they pass? Would they not pass? Running. Wow, they all passed. What would happen if we remove as it was and we run all again? So. It works and it waits. I'm expecting really a stack overflow here or something but the test should not be passing at all. It takes quite a lot of time. So we are going to cancel. Cancelling the second test. Would take a lot of time. So we are. Okay, let's see, not position minus two, but position minus one. This would be easy. Run all. Yes. Interesting. The f yeah, the first and the second test passed, of course. The one for the position number five gave a wrong one, and the twelfth position also gave gave quite a wrong one. So we go here and we do the thing that we were know that we knew that would work. Go to run all and work with the tests again. Now imagine imagine you're in a situation where someone sees what you are doing and he kind of says yeah Fibonacci with recursion is not exactly the best way to calculate Fibonacci there are plenty of other better ways for example simply do not recurse but loop from the numbers and sum them the one with the next so what should you do is pretty much you go say okay I'm taking my old code I'm commenting it because it was working or even deleting it but let's leave it commented and we say what do what do you mean for example you mean like a for loop so whenever Fibonacci is going to the position then simply do something with the result okay so what do we need to predefine is pretty much the first Fibonacci 
and it's one and the second Fibonacci which is also one and the result which I will leave as minus one so Fibonacci numbers are always a positive one so whenever I see a minus one I know that nothing has happened so in the loop I would say result Fibonacci is pretty much Fib1 plus Fib2 then Fib1 would be equal to Fib2 as far as we need to pass and Fib2 would be equal to result and at the end I would say return result let's see what would happen this way well we go here and run it would be it should be way faster than the previous milliseconds because we didn't do anything and now we have all the tests read what happened expected one actual two expected one actual three expected five actual thirteen expected 144 actual 377 hmm. okay if we have the first one expected one actual two we see that it skips in the line of Fibonacci with two numbers what should we do should we check should we amend the test or should we amend the code well the truth is that we should amend the code and exactly in the position where for int equals e minus equals uh, for int equaling zero no we have to start from the third actually from the third Fibonacci so pretty much for e equaling two and e less than position or for e equaling actually three and e smaller or equal than position mm, smaller or equal we still written like this so what should we do now run all again and hope that our tests would be okay would our test be okay? That's a good question. The first one, the first one and the second one did not pass. Why? That's a good, that's a great thing. Okay, expected one, actual minus one. Expected one, actual minus one. Okay, the fifth test pass and the twelfth test pass perfectly. Okay, so we go here and we start thinking what exactly happened, because with our three lines everything was perfect, and now writing a bit more lines just to make sure that we are going away from the recursion has made us so far into tr troubles but the test saved us twice so what's the problem here the problem is these two lines as you see so pretty much we need something similar if position equals one or position equals 2 then return simply 1 and that's all yeah we can even put it here before declaring variables or anything and we can say run all once again to see whether it would work wow everything works perfectly so pretty much this is a really small example of how to work with tests with x unit into visual studio thank you for watching and yeah have a nice day bye bye